Engine Performance Expo viewers. This is the whiteboard session I've been waiting for for two days. This is my man, a good friend of mine, Dr. I said, I said doctor, he has a PhD, Mark Malberg, who is the surface finish guru. And you've so helped us. Pretty so high much. bar, man. Pretty well, high bar. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. But you know, we talk about service finish all the time. Yeah. Honing all these things. And you know, you made uh, a point the other day that these cylinder surfaces mm -hmm. are the most engineered surfaces yeah. on the planet. So you right. deal with all kinds of surfaces. Yeah. yeah. Not just cylinders. So right. talk a little bit about surfaces, why they're important and what makes these unique? Sure. I mean, surfaces are important everywhere. You know, you heard the smooth as a baby's butt kind of thing, yep. right? Well, products are designed to feel smooth as a baby's butt in some industries. Mm -hmm. You know, something you're going to touch and deal with or, you know, something that's going to look sexy mm -hmm. or something maybe that needs to seal against an explosion. Yep. Well, um, that's the world of surfaces. And it's not just roughness. It's roundness and waviness and, you know, all the shapes that go with it. But to your point, cylinder bores have had more papers written and more research done on them than any of those other cool surfaces. So it's like ridiculously engineered and we still don't quite have it all figured out. Yeah. Oh, it was, as a tribologist, you yeah. know, for all the years of doing oil testing and research, surfaces, surface finish yeah. was the missing link. It was oh, the yeah. variable that we didn't know we didn't know. Right. And, and it's voodoo. Oh, but, but once we had a, a ability to measure a surface, yeah. now all of a sudden we can begin to engineer and change that exactly. surface and understand what's going on because the contact mechanics mm -hmm. are not nano scale, but they're really small scale. It's right. not that macro scale of, oh, it, does it look flat? Well, it could be flat, but as the previous video was watched, there could be waviness in sure. there that changes that contact geometry. So it's really important to have the ability to measure. Right, right. And that's really what we're talking about in this segment is this surface system, which is a complete package where, you know, we've talked a lot about in many videos, a profilometer. Now this is right. a Zeiss profilometer. Yeah. So explain what that does real quick for people who may not know what a profilometer is and what it does. Sure. It's, it's, Pretty basic, mm -hmm. but incredibly accurate. There's a diamond that's mm -hmm. gonna wiggle up and down on the surface. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's skidded, so there's a big kind of chunk of metal that keeps it in range. Right. So we rest that skid on the surface and then the diamond wiggles. Yeah, so as it goes, it makes its trace and goes across, it's following all those little peaks and right. valleys exactly. that are on that surface. Because it looks flat to the naked eye, yeah, but no. it really isn't. So I want to bring up one point you raised there. Mm -hmm. We see a graph that looks on the screen sometimes that looks like this crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. We got to remember this is magnified a whole bunch. These are millionths of an inch and these are inches. Right. So we get fooled when we look at this picture and we think we've got these steep valleys and how could you ever get a diamond down in that little thing? Mm -hmm. No, that's real wide we blow this up so we can see it. Right. And it's all about seeing it. In this world of surfaces, it's not a number, it's a shape. Bingo. So you need, and, you, and the reason why the, these valleys are so important yeah. is because that's what holds the oil. Right. Because oil is the, both the gasket and the lubricant for a ring seal. Exactly. So to get yeah. the ring to seal, to get cylinder seal both on the intake stroke and during combustion to make efficiency, you have to have a gasket. You have to have proper lubrication for longevity. Those valleys are what's going to do that job. So we have to work really hard to make sure in the honing process that we are creating with the face, maybe the first operation, yeah. a rough enough surface that has this valley, but then you're coming back and you're plateauing over it yes. to generate the load bearing area. Right, right, right. We're, we're combining two processes. It's mm -hmm. actually, it's not a surface, it's two surfaces. It's a smooth one on top of a rough one. Mm -hmm. it's, it's creating that surface that's already been broken in. Right. Um, you know, in manufacturing you say, well, that's not cleaned up. Exactly. We didn't want to clean it up. <laughs> right. We want to leave those valleys behind. And we want to do it in the right way, though. It's not just leave some behind, it's tuning that. Mm -hmm. And that tuning of how deep do we go? Let me take your plateau sure. and we'll move it into the surface here. Yeah. Well, that might work in one application. Somebody else may need it down here. Right. And it's hard to see that with numbers. Exactly. So one of the things we've seen with the profilometer for a long time is it 
it makes this little trace, and then yeah. the numbers pop up. Right. And you, we're all focused on the numbers. But then once you begin to see with the software that you right. developed, the trace ball software, which is part of this surface system that's available uh, from Total Seal, is these detection zones. So yeah, all you, right. you've got this trace right here. Yes. But when you look at it on the software, we can see a red area, yeah. a white area in the middle, and then a blue area. So explain what, why there are different colors and how those relate to the numbers. Yeah, so helping people connect, you know, back to their their gut feel. You know, mm -hmm. I'm working in the wood shop, turning on my lathe, and I can see the shapes and I can control them. Mm -hmm. You're not controlling them with numbers. You're controlling them by feel and your, you know, your own knowledge you and see. experience. Yeah. So in the world of surfaces, in the roughness world in these RK parameters we tend to use, yep. we're dealing with a surface that actually has kind of three zones we care about. Yep. And in the Trace Boss software, we have the RK parameter, that core roughness, mm -hmm. the RPK on the peaks and the VK on the valleys. Yep. So we've colored those zones so you can see what's being reported as peaks. They're reported in red on the screen. Right. So we can say how much of that surface is peaky versus the running core surface. And then, hey, we happen to have a blue marker. This, this, is, this is just like it was meant to be. There's a blue zone that kind of tells us this is the valley region of that surface. And it's that connection from numbers back to craftsmanship. Yep. You know, using both sides of your brain, the math side and the creative side. And what really got my attention when we first started playing with the software and looking at it and seeing it is that that diamond, that trace, yeah. is what's real. Absolutely. It, it's the real surface. Yeah. The numbers are a numerical representation of the trace. So true. So, so we're already playing the telephone game yes. if you're just relying on the numbers alone. Yeah, well, it's, so have you ever been to a concert and it was the greatest experience and you tell your friends, it was 104 decibels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Didn't, it didn't convey the experience. Yeah. This picture is the experience. Right. Those numbers are like the decibels at the concert. And that's so. where, uh, that's the cool thing with the trace ball software is that as opposed to trying to run the profilometer and look at the gauge and see all this stuff, now we can run the profilometer from the laptop using yeah. the software. So you could, we could put this in the bore and scan the bore and you can look at it. And what's neat is because now you can save those files. Right. You're not dealing with one moment in time yeah see what so, you did last week or... right so if you change well for a perfect example if you change what your roughing abrasive is right so yeah we'll pull up here real quick three different homes okay all finished with 600 grit cbn yeah but one of them is going to begin with the 325 diamond okay then we're going to go to a 170 diamond all right and then we're going to go to a 70 diamond so we're and, working on that base texture right and you're going to kiss them all with a 600 in the end yes all right let's see that's, that's the idea so cool, cool. here's let's start off right here and i believe okay one on the screen already is the 325 400 diamond you can see that yeah that, that little flat area on top yeah but those valleys really aren't going that low now let's try bringing in the 170s and you can already see those peaks those Extending downward down. valleys in there. Yeah, yep. yeah. Or yeah, those valleys, they're going to hold the oil because, right. hey, if I'm going from gasoline to, say, mm -hmm. methanol as a fuel, oh, yeah. I'm going to run more fuel through the engine with Absolutely. methanol yeah. than I did out than gasoline. Yes. So I need more valley to do that. Then, of course, we've been honing some nitro top fuel cylinders back there this week. And whoo, wow, you see that blue zone, girl? <laughs> Just, <laughs> So Went we're crazy. just adding all kinds of volume down here. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't even talk about numbers. No. It was an entire picture conversation. And we're back there on the hone saying, should we add a stroke or two completely on the, on the, the profile graph? Right. At, in this world, those numbers move around so much. And you might have valleys that half count as peaks and peaks that half count as valleys. But that picture is truth. Well, the other thing the other day, you know, Mark Cronquist, who's been part of the show and is original Engine Performance Expo founder, right, in yeah. terms of uh, sharing information, he made the comment that when they were, at one point, at Joe Gibbs Racing, we had an oil consumption problem that was based on the fact that we were hitting the numbers, yeah. but we actually weren't getting the right surface. Only oh, yeah. when they went 
to a lab and took a cylinder and actually could see the cylinder right. under a microscope, they're like, oh, this looks terrible. Exactly. It's, you hit the numbers and it turns out it wasn't the symphony, it was a fire truck. Right. The decibels, the decibels were the same. Exactly, exactly. You want to <laughs> see the song, you want to hear the, it. You want to hear right. the song, see well, the shape. Right. Yeah. So the next part is, yeah. you want to see, well, guess what? Yeah. This can give you that two-dimensional right. trace. How tall is it? You know, how, how rough is it? Right. But let's go, let's get better. This is the coolest thing ever. A USB microscope that you can now couple with this, the software. Now I can pull this up and it's gonna do me two things. One, I can see the surface. Right. Magnified. Porosity, honing marks, reversals. Everything. Absolutely. Is it clean, is it clean is or it is clean? it oh, yeah. folded and torn? You can see that with this. Absolutely. Plus it actually tells you what the crosshatch angle Live. is. Live, as you move around. Yeah, I can move this and, around and that yeah. crosshatch angle changes as it picks up the different prospect angle. We're going for a walk inside the bore. And then you've got this little thing in the background, the little spider plot, if you will, the blob. Yeah, right. That basically shows you how, in, how uniform it is, right? right? It's kind of the strength. How okay. strong are those lines? Sometimes if you've got boring marks, mm -hmm. you'll see a horizontal spike stick out yes. because there's strength in the wrong direction. Right. So we want to see a nice X. Yeah, you want a nice, clean, defined profile. And I know some people have already been playing with this. They've already started to notice that that uniformity yes. is actually one of the real keys to how well that engine performs. Oh, that's They can have level. all the same numbers, yeah. but that uniformity oh. is what's actually beginning to drive it. So cross hatch angle, surface finish, they're both really critical. So to talk more about cross hatch angle, we're gonna go to a video with me and Ed Keebler demonstrating this tool in action. What a day, what a day, what a day. My, yeah, my, brain, my brain is swollen, I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars, we are not gonna listen. <laughs>